Welcome fellow doggers, friends, and fans to another edition of Off the Hook here on Big Dog Music Radio. Produced and directed by Lisa Day. Each week we like to get together and spin some fabulous tunes by the very talented artists at BigDogMusicMafia.com and get to know one of our fantastic culture warriors who will be joining us in about 15 minutes. If you'd like to be a part of tonight's show, you can call us at 347-838-8898 or you can hit the little Skype button at the top of our player at our blog talk radio station, Big Dog Music Radio. So we hope that you're at home, relaxed, with your boots kicked off, sitting in your favorite chair, with your favorite person, and your favorite beverage, and we hope that you'll enjoy the show. I'm your host, Lisa May. And welcome to our weekly show, Off the Hook. I am Lise May, and we are tickled tonight because we are going to be joined by our good friend Michael J. Marino from Chloe's Open Socket, the hard rockin' patriot band from Florida, uh, comprised of Michael Marino and Tony Rook, who also happen to be members of Bobby Powers and Party Time. And we'll be talking about um, uh, some future events in which both bands will be reunited uh, next year. So be sure to stick around for uh, our spotlight artist, uh, Mr. Michael Marino, who will be joining us at about 10.15. We want to welcome all of our listeners over at BigDogMusicRadio.com as well as Blog Talk Radio, our Big Dog Music Radio station. And to those of you who are watching our live video feed at Big Dog TV, either on our iBroadcast channel, Big Dog Music, or at our um, Big Dog TV station on Big Dog Music Radio. If you go to BigDogMusicRadio.com, look for the tab at the top of the page that says Big Dog TV. And if you'd like to chat with us and you're a member of Big Dog Music Mafia, just drop down to the big dog chat room right underneath big dog tv and join us in the chat room and so um as we always do on these shows we like to just kind of kick things off with a song because we are all about the music and the arts and uh, how we can educate the world and um, hopefully change hearts and minds for the better through our creative abilities so we're going to go ahead and play a song by the very talented vocalist, Mr. Mark P. 2103, who's also a wonderful songwriter. But this is um, his cover version of uh, the song, All I Want for Christmas is You. Back the heart and mistletoe, silver bells on strings. If I wrote a letter to Santa Claus, I would ask for just one thing. I don't need sleigh rides in. The snow, no one Christmas that's blue. Take back the tinsel, stocking and bones. Cause all I want for Christmas is you. I don't need expense. I want 
can't be found underneath the Christmas tree. You're the angel atop my tree. You're my dream come true. Santa can't bring me what I need. Cause all I want for Christmas is you And that was Mr. Mark P. 2103, who you can find at BigDogMusicMafia.com, our social networking site for artists who lean to the right, conservatives, libertarians, and we've got all kinds of talent there. We have obviously uh, talented musicians, but we also have fantastic filmmakers and cartoonists, uh, authors, bloggers, radio hosts, painters, photographers, you name it. And uh, if you are into the arts or you are uh, someone who appreciates good talent and happens to also share our right-leaning ideology, we would love to have you join us. It's free. It's BigDogMusicMafia.com and that's D-A-W-G because we are that cool. And so now we're going to do just a quick uh, news roundup. First, uh, we want to give a birthday shout out to those celebrating their birthdays today, that would be Jen, John Robert Conley, Lee Gaiman, a good friend of Trade, Martin and Jimmy J, Lyricus Regina Thompson, and Rob Stifler. And then tomorrow we have George Pepper and Jimmy LaSalvia, who is founder of GoProud.com. Now, um, for those of you who uh, have been watching our, or listening to our shows the past couple weeks, you've heard us talk about the Defend the Constitution rally, and that's going to be in Waynesboro, Tennessee. Um, let's see, April 25th through the 27th next year, and uh, we, Big Dog Music Radio and Big Dog Music Mafia, are the uh, entertainment sponsors for this fabulous event. And uh, we also have our sister site, our friends over at uh, Traditional American Movement, Mr. Bing Fisher, who's also with Conservative Nation uh, Radio. They will be uh, helping with the uh, planning as well as um, co-sponsoring this event. And the artists that are going to be performing at this event that have agreed to perform are Michael Marino's band, Chloe's Open Socket, who you're going to get to hear from in just a few minutes. We have Bobby Powers and Party Time. And we also have Brian Futch. Now, I just read on Brian's Facebook page that uh, his daughters, Maritza and Cecilia, have uh, just been in an accident. And poor Brian, he is out of town at the moment, so you know he's frantic. But he did say that they are okay, just very shaken up. 
and uh, he believes that his car is totaled. So please do keep the Futch family in your prayers. Also performing at the Defend the Constitution rally, we have uh, Nashville's Nathan Picard and Ms. Cat Beach, both from the uh, Nashville, Tennessee area. So we're looking forward to seeing them as well. And all the way from New York, Mr. Chip Murray. So uh, we do hope that you will um, make plans, you know, go ahead and uh, block off those dates. That's April 25th through 27th in Waynesboro, Tennessee. It's going to be a, a campground uh, where they're going to have RV hookups and a place for you to pitch a tent. But they also do have uh, limited uh, space in their motels and cabins. And there will also be uh, the ability to stay in other local um, hotels in, in the area. Monday night at 8 p.m. Central, Conservative Nation Radio's show, Inside Tennessee with Dave Vance, uh, will be talking about the Defend the Constitution rally um, with Mr. Bing Fisher and the organizer, Mr. Phil Dedrick. Um, and actually during the first hour, which I will definitely be tuning into, will be uh, Karen and Billy Vaughn, the parents of slain SEAL Team Six member um, Aaron Vaughn from the Extortion 17 uh, shoot down in Afghanistan. So, definitely want to uh, tune in for that show. Want to give a big salute to the. Uh, um, oh, I see we do have a caller. So, um, I, I'm going to guess that that is our uh, spotlight artist, Mr. Marino. We will be uh, bringing him on in just a few minutes. Uh, but, big shout out to our. Let's see. Hmm. I'm trying, okay, so sorry. <laughs> I was reading and I heard someone saying, sounds like dripping and snoring or growling. I thought, gosh, I hope that that's not us. <laughs> sorry, Richard. Um, hopefully uh, that's not what y'all are hearing. Anyways, big sh uh, shout out to We the Truckers who uh, went to Washington, D.C. yesterday from uh, Philadelphia uh, to deliver a monument size constitution and they uh, have pictures over on their Facebook page we the truckers just look them up um, from what I understand they were denied a permit but they went ahead and rode anyways and uh, interestingly enough they said that there is not a single news story on Google that you can find about this event I did manage to find one article that talked about uh, their event so that's a shame but uh, Real quick, our show lineup tomorrow morning, if you are up bright and early at 8 a.m., um, we hope that you will join us for our 30-minute show, uh, Salt and Light from the Right, uh, which I host, and we share some inspirational music. Of course, this is the Christmas season, so we will most likely be sharing some Christmas music uh, with the focus on the real meaning of Christmas, which is the birth of Jesus Christ. And then at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, we have uh, Today in News Sunday Morning Funhouse Show with Trey Martin and Jimmy J. Uh, they're always, uh, in fact, they said that uh, coming up, I think at the end of this month or the 23rd, they are going to be uh, celebrating their um, one-year anniversary with Big Dog Music Radio. Uh, let's see. So looking forward to uh, celebrating with them. And then there's Wednesday at Midnight. Uh, the more serious side of Trade Martin um, at 9 p.m. Central or Pacific and midnight East Coast time, which is really Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Uh, so join us uh, for that show. And then finally, next Saturday night, we have singer songwriter Michael Antonio from Las Vegas who will be joining us. We want, uh, want to give a quick shout out to uh, our sister stations FTR Radio, Traditional American Movement, Ghost Fighter Radio. Free Zone Media Center, Right Stream Radio Network. We built that network and Liberatchik.com. Um, we're going to go ahead and play just a quick promo. And when we come back, we will be welcoming our spotlight artist, Mr. Michael Marino, to the show. Hey, everybody, this is Trey Martin. How you doing? Yeah, I'm here with Papa Google, and we're listening to Big Dog Music Radio. Oh, it sounds and feels so right. Let's hear it for Big Dog Music Radio. Let's hear it up there. Come on. Right on, right on, right on, as Rush Limbaugh would say. Right on, right on, right on. All right. Well, let's see. Um, before I bring uh, Michael on, want to let you know that you can uh, check out uh, Chloe's Open Sockets music at chloesopensocket.com. Michael 
is an upstate New York native. His early years were spent on stage with regional bands Blacksmith and Eastwall, supporting national bands Badlands, Stu Ham, David Lee Roth, Chastain, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, Trickster, Yingwei, Malstein, <laughs> and uh, Jackal. So I'm not sure if I even pronounced that. Y-N-G-W-I-E. Occasionally still hitting the stage, Marino spends most of his time writing, recording, and producing for Chloe's Open Socket. He also creates music for commercials and promo videos. Michael and his bandmate Tony Rook will be, as I mentioned, one of the Patriot bands performing at the Defend the Constitution rally in Waynesboro, Tennessee on the 25th through the 27th of April. So be sure to get over to the rally page and join that group for uh, the latest and greatest uh, information on the event. Uh, we want to go ahead and welcome you, Mr. Michael Marino. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm uh, filled with holiday cheer. I just left my neighborhood Christmas party, and we had a lot of good food, a lot of good conversation, and uh, yeah, feeling pretty good. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, I am really excited because... Uh, you sent me the files for two brand spanking new tunes, and I have not listened to it uh, yet because we are going to debut them exclusively here on Big Dog Music Radio, and we wanted to make sure... Oh, that's very cool. That's right. I wanted to make sure that I heard it at the same time all of our friends and listeners uh, got to hear it. Um, so anyways, so before we get to that, though, uh, so what have you been up to? I mean, gosh, when was the last time I saw you guys? Well, um... Well, the last time we actually saw each other, I, I don't even know. I think it was, um, I think it was actually before the 2010 elections, and uh, I think it was in Richmond was the last time we actually saw each other. Um, but we've talked a little bit since then, and um, I am looking forward to uh, Tennessee in April. That's going to be good. Tony and I are um, really working on some some cool stuff to do, and actually. Um, the two new tracks that you're going to hear tonight, I actually, I mean, I, I, I put them on a fast track for you because we put this together like a week, uh, week and a half ago, and the songs were in the works, but they weren't, they weren't really finished yet. I mean, musically they were finished, but production-wise, they weren't quite finished, and there'll probably be a couple more mixes after this, but um, I wanted to get them done for tonight. And uh, so you can honestly say that maybe the two new songs, these are the Lisa May Norton mixes. How about that? <laughs> I love it. I feel special. <laughs> and actually, it's not, it's not me. It's the Big Dog mixes. It's for all of our friends yeah, there you at, go. at the Big Dog Music That's Mafia. Right. That's right. Excellent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, awesome. Um, now, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. When... Well, you know what, before we go uh, and, and play the first song, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, ask you about your your band name. And I know we talked about it the last time we had you on the show, but gosh, that was well over a year ago. We've got a lot of new friends and listeners. So tell us about the name Chloe's Open Socket. Okay. Um, well, Chloe's Open Socket came about, uh, when I lived up in New York, I was a big fan of the show 24. And I had another buddy, and, and you know, we showed a lot of similarities in music and, and TV. And we, our favorite character, um, aside from Jack Bauer, obviously, was Chloe O'Brien. And Chloe O'Brien was kind of a tech head who was like a communications expert. And, and every time one of the agents or somebody needed a line of communication, they would always ask her to open a socket. And, you know, she would always say, okay, you know, I have a socket open for you, this, that, and the other thing. And uh, we were partying one night, hanging out, just talking about stuff. And, you know, he said, man, you know, I, I got a great band name. And at the time, I didn't, I don't even think I was even in a band at the time. And, you know, he said, I got this band named Chloe's Open Socket. And, it, I mean, from that point on, it just blew me away. I knew immediately that that was going to be... Um, a name that I use at some point in the future in something, and here we are, I don't know, 12 years later, and um, I'm still using it. <laughs> awesome, I love it, and I love that show. I mean, um, I have yeah. I have to wa I admit, great. though, I haven't watched it in a few years, though. You know, it, it seems like yeah. ever since um, Obama 
became our president, it's like suddenly TV shows that I used to just enjoy, kick back and enjoy watching, I, um, I don't seem to have the time to, uh, to devote to stuff like that. I totally agree. And, uh, you know, I went through the same thing um, where I just was disinterested in anything that had to do with um, you know, sitting down and, and actually just, you know, tuning out for a little while because it did just seem like my mind was constantly racing about, you know, how do we fix this? How do we, um, you know, how do we change people's minds? How do we get people to think, um, the, you know, and I don't want to say the right way, but a, a normal way because there's nothing that's going on in this country right now that is normal. Um, and, you know, I went through that for a number of years and then, I don't know, I sat down and I watched some TV one night and it was a re oh, it was a show, um, it was Justified, I don't know if you, if you know the show or whatever, but it's, um, uh, Timothy Oliphant and the show Justified and it's on for 12 weeks every year, that's it, because now, you know, series are, are just reduced to like a half a season now. Um, and that got me, and that show actually got me back into just tuning out for an hour a night or a half hour a night or whatever. And um, that turned into two or three different shows. And I, I do, I watch three or four different shows now just to decompress uh, for a little while because otherwise you just go crazy thinking about this stuff. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, you know what? Why don't you why don't you go ahead and tell us about um, your remix now of your song "Show Me the Way Home" because we want to go ahead and play that first. Okay. Well, "Show Me the Way Home" is basically a conversation with God, um, and a not and, and and not a very good conversation with him. It's um, uh, it was written at a point in time where everything that I had been trying to do and anything that I had been trying to accomplish was just literally just falling apart at the seams. And the song was, um, the song is more about just, um, you know, asking, you know, um, you know, why is this happening? Um, you know, and how do I get back to a point where I'm a comfort, you know, a comfort zone, you know, and that's basically what show me the way home means, not so much, you know, show me how to get home, but show me back to a place where I'm in a comfort zone where I understand what's going on and I know how to push forward with things. And the reason I remixed it, I actually re-recorded the vocal because um, the chorus never sat well with me. I didn't like the way it sounded. Um, the harmonies just didn't work for me. They weren't catchy enough. But I didn't change any of the words. Um, I did remix the drums a little bit. Um, and I just thought I could do a better job with the song. Um, and so that's why I decided to go through and, and redo the vocals. Um, and, you know, my, my, my songs are never done. So I'm sure that at some point um, I'll touch it up um, again. But at this point, I'm, I'm fairly happy with where it's at now. Excellent. Well, why don't we go ahead and play Show Me The Way Home, the remix. Cool. All right.
All right, and that was the brand spanking remix version of Show Me the Way Home. Sounds awesome, Michael. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we were, um, you know, I got to tell you, we were playing uh, some of your songs for the organizers of the Defend the Constitution rally, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and they were like, holy moly, these guys kick butt. And I said, oh, yes, they do. And, and uh, you know, they're going to, you know, we're, we're anticipating a whole bunch of bikers showing up. I know they're going to really dig cool. your stuff. Patriot bikers and truckers. So that's going to be awesome. Now, listen. That's we're, great. Yeah. Um, hang on for just a bit. We're going to take our half hour break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the event. And um, actually, if anybody is listening and they'd like to call in and talk about the event, and ask Michael a question or anything. The number is 347-838-8898. And uh, uh, you can call in and we'll uh, get you on the air and you can chit chat with uh, Michael Marino. So go ahead and refresh those drinks. We will be right back. Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome tonight? I wonder if you're lonesome tonight. Well, if you're a conservative artist, you probably are. All alone in a sea of liberals. But there's a place where you can join with other conservative arts. BigDogMusicMafia.com. There you can share your talent and the creations that you made so carefully. And never feel ridiculed for having traditional American values and beliefs. Now, honey. The mainstream media lied when they said all artists are liberals. But now you're going to make the world doubt them. Because at Big Dog Music Mafia, we show everyone how they can easily live without it. Now the stage is bare. But you'll find that you're most welcome there. And on the liberal media, together we can Bring the curtain down. Is your heart filled with pain? And let me tell you again. Come to Big Dog Music Mafia. Lord, come. Okay, we are back, and I'm actually I switched to a different mic. Uh, went ahead uh, and switched to our external mic instead of the internal mic. I'm wondering if perhaps y'all are hearing the grinding of the laptop fan. It seems like it's on its last legs here. Uh, it is making a funky noise, so that might be what you all are hearing. And uh, anyways. Um, Want to welcome back our spotlight artist for the week, Mr. Michael Marino. So tell us, uh, Michael, um, this uh, event coming up in uh, Tennessee. Um, you mentioned that you might be bringing another uh, member. Now, Tony Rook, your drummer, is coming for sure, right? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. Yes. And um, uh, you know, Tony and I, we can. You know, this is going to be an acoustic event for us just because of, obviously, you know, the, the travel and whatever. It's just so much easier to, to show up with a couple of acoustics and, and, and do our thing. Um, but he he approached me with, um, uh, he, he's got a friend who is really, really into um, what we do, not just musically, but um, politically also. And he specifically asked if, he could be a part of this event, and um, you know, we said, you know, yeah, on the outset, but you know, it's a lot of work for you to do. Um, obviously, you have plenty of time, um, 
but he's a very accomplished guitar player. Um, he's uh, he, he fits right in musically. He's in a couple of different uh, projects right now. He plays for um, a really heavy, heavy um, dark metal band, um, and he's also going on tour for about six weeks with. And you have to forgive me, I forgot this person's name, but they were second or third runner-up uh, on American Idol. Oh wow! Um, last year, I think. I'm not positive about that, but anyway, he's doing like a, a six-week thing with them um, on the road. He, he's um, he's very accomplished, and I told him if you want to do the work and you want to do the traveling, um, then you're more than welcome to come. Because for me, it's you know, I mean, bass guitar is my is my natural instrument. Um, you know, I can I can pull off the acoustic pretty well too, but I'm much more comfortable, um, you know, stalking around the stage with a, with a bass guitar strapped around me, especially if I'm if I'm singing. Um, I'm really comfortable as a front man with a bass guitar um, around my shoulder. So if I can bring somebody along to, to take the heat off of me on that, I'm I'm great with it. You know, it's it's um you know, Tony and I we do our thing, um, just the two of us most of the time, and. It, you know, it, there's benefits and, and, and disadvantages to not really having a, a, a full band all the time. Um, the benefits are, you know, you just don't have to deal with other people. Um, and that's a plus a lot of the time. Um, but the disadvantages are that a lot of times if a big event like this comes along, it's nice to have um, one or two other people on stage, um, not just to fill it out, but also to give you as a front man, more freedom to do your thing. Um, so that's that's where we're at right now. Um, and again, it's early in this whole game. We have yet to even have a rehearsal together. So right. um, you know, I'm certain I'm certainly not making a confirmation that we're going to bring a third guy. But I'm I'm pretty much hoping that we do. That will be awesome, and uh, definitely yeah, looking forward to it. So yeah, <laughs> um, I uh, I'm trying to think. So. Um, why don't actually why don't you go ahead and tell us about uh, the remix for uh, while we're not looking? Is it basically the same deal? You were able to add. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, this was a, this was a little different because if you remember the, the the first version of while we're not looking was really just something that I put together in a few hours. Um, I had the idea, I had the words, and the words for this song just really um, came together quickly. It was a song that um, the words were. I mean, it was just there. It was very. It was. Uh, it's a fairly emotional song, um, and it really came all at once. And um, I didn't have time to really have any drum tracks done or anything, so I just put the acoustic parts down. Um, I did the vocals, and then I just literally. Um, just created some drum programming for it and put the song out there and everybody really loved it and mm -hmm. I liked it too. It had a different feel to it. Um, it. It had a much more commercial feel to it and that was obviously the, the drum programming. Um, so basically what I did, and, and <laughs> this is the funny thing, is if you listen to that song, somewhere about three quarters of the way through the second verse, it falls out of sync with the drum tracks. Oh, wow. And, and, Oh yeah, and it was, and it, it's, it happens for about 15 to 20 seconds, and to me, it's like just somebody scratching a chalkboard every time <laughs> I hear it, and because it's really, to me, it's really obvious, um, because I, you can see, I, you can hear I rush the vocal, the the guitar picking is completely um, behind the drum tracks, and I just left it because I just wanted to put the song out there and get some feedback on it. So basically what I did was we re-recorded the whole song with real drum tracks. Um, Tony played drums on it, I put a bass track on it, and I redid the guitars and um, and redid the vocals. So I think vocally it's a little stripped, it's a little, uh, it's a little stripped down from the original. I don't think I did as much harmony on it. It just it didn't, to me, it just didn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, and so there it is. It's just uh, a new version of it with um, with live drums. All right. And do you want to talk a little bit about the message? Yeah. Well, um, 
Yeah, this song is, um, it's basically, um, you know, the situation that we're in today, mm -hmm. asking is, is there enough people who think, you know, the way we do that, you know, that feel that something is wrong, and, and not just in, in the people that we're electing, but um, the culture as a whole, you know, um, we're just not thinking, the majority, it seems, isn't thinking um, in normal ways anymore. The kids are coming out of high school and college, and they're, um, they're not thinking that they need to um, really work hard and, and build a career, um, but that they just want... You know, everything's fast, fast, fast. I want to have a, I want to make a big living. I want to be successful. I want to do this. I want to do that. You got a lot of people, especially with YouTube and, and all these things. People are doing all these stupid things to try to be famous. And right. Meanwhile, nobody's, nobody's paying attention to anything that's going on culturally and we're losing it. And the country is just, um, coming apart at the seams, it seems. And, and I know that it's probably not, but, it sure does seem that way. And this song just basically asks, you know, um, is there enough people that still care? Is there enough people that still get it? Amen. Um, yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, that's why we're here. That's what we all are doing at Big Dogs is trying to wake people up to uh, mm -hmm. that exact message um, through the arts because, um, face it, a lot of people aren't going to tune in to uh, Limbaugh or Levin um, or Fox News or anything like that. So we've got to reach them um, through through the medium that they enjoy, which is music and art and film and television. And the left has very successfully hijacked uh, that, uh, basically hijacked our culture. So why don't we're, we're going to go ahead yeah. and play while we're not looking. And when we come back, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about your brand new song. I can't wait. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. Give our money away to those who don't pay their fair 
fresh air. It's not the one percent that breathes entitlement. And the union suck our industry dry. Give them bailouts and bonuses, it just ain't right. expected nothing less <laughs> and uh you know you know it's just um i i uh, recall the uh time that you and um tony and who was the third gentleman with you guys when you all did that um off the cuff and rough show uh that was um that was my friend garrett uh garrett bird and uh he was uh he was doing some stuff for a while with us but um he uh he was just kind of a fill-in guy, helping us out. Because, you know, sometimes when um, when you're going to do something like that, like I said before, you just want to get a little help. He right. didn't work out so well, though. He, I thought he was going to put a little more work into the thing. And Actually, you know what? There's a, that, that's a perfect example right there of why I don't have a full band. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just, it's just so hard to get everybody on the same page. And um, uh, a lot of times I get much more accomplished. I'm just having it me and Tony. Um, unless that right guy comes along, if that right guy comes along, he's more than welcome. Or she, I don't really care. Um, they're uh, more than welcome to join up. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, um, the big moment has arrived. I want to hear you tell us about your song, I'm Not. Okay. Um, let's see, where do I start? This song is probably one of the um, one of the more political songs that I've written in the last couple of years. It's really on, on the edge, and it just really explains um, how I feel as a person. Um, it, it, there's a little animosity in the song. Um, you know, I'm tired of being um, pushed around, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just everything that's going on politically today, um, it just seems that, you know, government um, is telling us what to do every single day, and it's really starting to get to me. I know it's been going on for a few years, but it just seems that recently, over the last couple of years, it is really getting oppressive, and I'm just pretty much being, I'm just tired of it, and this song reflects that. Um, it, it reflects um, where we are as a society and um, how it's how it's pissing me off. I guess is the best way to say it. Um, and it is very much one-sided. Um, this song is pretty much how I feel, and that's really that's what it comes down to. Um, there's really no other way to put it. Awesome. Well. Debuting exclusively on Big Dog Music Radio on our show Off the Hook, we are playing I'm Not by Chloe's Open Socket.
listen to that. That was an awesome tune. <laughs> that is going to go over like gangbusters at our uh, Defend the Constitution rally. I mean, that just says yeah. it all. I hope so. I'm looking forward to playing that one live for sure. Absolutely. And man, listen to Tony there at the end doing his thing. That was awesome. Um, and Yeah, Tony definitely... Uh... He's definitely opening up a lot more on the drums. Um, he, he gets more comfortable all the time. You know, Tony has a bunch of other projects that he plays in, too, so this is always, um, you know, for him it's always a little bit of a treat, but just late, lately, the last four or five tunes that we've done, um, he's really, really starting to open up and come into his own. Fantastic. Now, you know, I, I would imagine that the other bands that he plays with, they're probably... I, I'm going to assume that they probably don't even talk about politics, right? No, they don't. He, um, one of the bands is just a cover thing that he does to, to make a little cash on the side, but um, uh, he plays in a, um, uh, he plays in an original band, um, and they're all, you know, they're all younger, they're all in their early, early 20s, and they are aware um they are aware of what's going on politically. I, obviously, they don't understand it um, in the way that we would. Mm -hmm. um, but um, even the, the band is called the Caleb Hires Band, and Caleb, um, the, lead, the lead vocalist and the front man, he is very aware politically. Um, and some of his songs do have kind of a political tone to it, but obviously he's young, um, the attitude is a little immature, and even though he's aware of certain things, there isn't an under there's not uh, an understanding of what's going on. But just the fact that he is uh, politically, um, I guess, uh, conscious, mm -hmm. I think is a plus. Yeah, a absolutely. And and hanging out with you, he can't help but not. Um get get yeah. uh, big doses of the truth so uh listen we are actually we're actually i want to carry on this conversation because we still have to debut your other song and uh you had mentioned okay. uh, when we talked the other day that you were you are we're all ours for as long as we needed you yeah. so <laughs> so we're gonna yes. uh, awesome so we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh close out uh this show and uh when we come back we will talk some more about um Oh, about whatever you want to talk about and uh, of course um, have you talk about your um, other new song sound good okay awesome Great. and that's gonna do it for tonight's edition of off the hook here on big dog music radio we hope that you've enjoyed the show and look forward to having you join us again next Saturday night, same time, same station, where we'll be chatting with yet another fabulous culture warrior and spinning some more fantastic music by the very talented artists at BigDogMusicMafia.com. If you don't have any plans, we'd love to have you stick around for our second hour Afterburner, our live listener request show, where you get to pick the songs that we play. Just give us a call at 347-838-8898. And if we have the song, we'll be happy to play it. So until next week, keep your chin up, keep the faith, and keep up the good fight. I'm your host, Lisa May. Good night, Breitbart, wherever you are. George Bailey. I'm surprised to see you here, George. Why, the last time I saw you, you called me a warped, frustrated old man. You remember that, George? Do you remember? Well, well gosh, gosh, Mr. Potter, I, I, I shouldn't have called you that. Right. Well, what I meant to say was, you're a stinking liberal, a leftist, what? a would-be communist who thinks he's top czar. Yeah, you, you, you sit around here 
plotting and scheming to get your oily hands and opinions into the mass media is a, is a too much to ask for the poor working man who comes home to a couple of little rooms to be able to relax and turn on the TV or, or, or listen to some music without being exposed to your socialist philosophies uh, from your bleeding heart anti-American entertainers. Well, good patriotic, God-loving Americans don't have to be captive to your liberal claptrap anymore. Now they can log on to, to BigDogMusicMafia.com for the best in conservative and liberal free arts. There, there's music, there's video, comedy, I informative articles, just about any form of art you can think of, and we don't have to be beholding to our mainstream media anymore. So, so goodbye, Mr. Potter. I'm off to BigDogMusicMafia.com. BigDogMusicMafia.com. That's dog spelled D-A-W-G. Log in today for the home of conservative arts, where cultural warriors unite and collaborate. A cultural revolution is brewing at BigDogMusicMafia.com. Welcome to our second hour, Afterburner, our live listener request show, where you get to pick the songs that we play. All you have to do is call us at 347-838-8898, and if we have the song you'd like to hear by one of the fabulous artists at BigDogMusicMafia.com, we'll be happy to play it. If you don't want to call in, you can leave us a request in our chat room during the show, or you can go to our main radio station, BigDogMusicRadio.com, go to the Live Shows tab, and fill out the song request form with the song that you'd like to hear, and you can even make a dedication. We're real glad to have you here with us every Saturday night, and we do hope that you'll enjoy the show. I'm your host, Lisa May. Okay, I think we're back. Um, oh, that's better. All right. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the the software that we use, the Minicam, it's it's like an audio-visual uh, uh, webcam interface that allows us to import music, images, and sound effects and all kinds of other cool stuff. And um, periodically, it decides to lock up on us. And, and when it does that, it starts, basically, it starts playing the next song in our playlist. And uh, there's no way to stop it because it's not responding. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, no, don't do that to us. All right, so now we're back on video, and it looks really funky. It's really bright. Uh, we got to adjust, make a couple adjustments here. But anyways, uh, for those of you um, who are listening to the show and who are watching the show um, at Big Dog TV, we're glad to have you. We are talking to Michael J. Marino of Chloe's Open Socket, and uh, he... Um, told us all about his last new song in our last hour. If you are just now joining us, be sure to go to um, our YouTube channel, Big Dog Music Mafia uh, YouTube, and um, it'll probably be tomorrow sometime when we'll have the video up from this show, the video podcast, and you'll be able to hear uh, Michael um, and Tony's new song, I'm Not. So now I want to hear all about your other new song, Eulogy. All right. Um, Eulogy is uh, a, a pretty dark song. It's um, it's about musicians um, that I have run into here in, in in not just in the Tampa area, but in, in Orlando and um, places like Fort Lauderdale and stuff. And um, you know, there's two kinds of musicians. There's the successful ones, and there's the not successful ones. And uh, you know, success doesn't always mean that you're making a lot of money um, and that you're famous. Success means that you're, you know, writing and performing music that you love, that you that you're writing and that that you believe in. To me, that's you know, that's that's success. And then there's musicians who are uh, very capable and talented that get stuck in a uh, just get stuck in a vicious cycle. And especially down here in the South, where you have all these cover bands. Um, that, you know, you can play, you can play six 
seven nights a week out of here if you want. Um, but really, really all you're going to do is get burned out. It's not really going to further your career if you're an original musician. A lot of guys get wrapped up in the cover scene down here. I, I was one of them. Um, and you you play and you play and you play and, and everything's great, but your original music isn't, you know, you're not serving yourself at all with your original music. And at some point, you know, you turn around and, you know, you're an older dude and you're still not going anywhere. And that's what this song is about. And I know, you know, I know people personally that, have, that are going through this and I see them in the clubs and they're a disaster. They're a mess, whether it's alcohol or drugs or just depression or um, whatever. Um, they're a mess. And you can't tell them, you know, you're going the wrong way. You have to stop doing what you're doing and put all your energy into your music, even if it means, you know, going out and getting a job uh, to support your family or yourself or whatever. But you have to get, if you want to, push your original music, you have to get out of this um, cover scene that just eats you alive. I mean, that's really what it does to, to musicians down here. And Eulogy is a song just about that, and it just asks these people, you know, um, what, what are you doing with, with yourself? You know, where do you expect to be? Um, you're not you're not learning anything by, you know, the position that you're in. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, once again, we are debuting exclusively on our show um, Afterburner which is our live listener request show a brand spanking new song by Chloe's Open Socket called Eulogy
All right, it would help if I turned my mic on. <laughs> that was awesome. Another, another Chloe's Open Socket kick butt tune. Um, that is very, very cool. Now, so um, tell me again, because, and, and I have to uh, apologize, I'm like multitasking. Now, the, you, you said that the focus of the song was, was on um, bands that, that do cover music and, and, and that sort of thing, or? Yeah, and, and I don't, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, you know, being in a cover band is a bad thing, I, I, because if that's what, um, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but what the song is about is it's about uh, musicians that get into the cover scene to try and um, further their own music or their original project or their, you know, their original songs for whatever, and they get caught into this thing where you feel that you have to be playing, you know, every gig that's offered to you, and thinking that you're furthering yourself, and the fact of the matter is, is you play a cover gig, you're doing absolutely nothing for your original, um, you know, for your original career, and, you know, I know, I know guys personally that are in the 40s and early 50s that are still doing this mm -hmm. and when you see them now they are they're burned out I mean they are toast and you know and they get bitter and they're wondering why you know they go to play um, you know they go to play a, a, a little shack on St. Pete Beach and you know there's 20 people in the bar um, I see their posts on Facebook and, you know they're saying you know what the hell you know doesn't anybody give a crap about music anymore there's something other thing well yeah, people give a crap about music, but um, you know, not not everybody wants to go see a cover band all the time. And especially if you've been doing it for 20 years or 15 years or 10 years, um, and people have seen you, that's kind of the problem with um, the cover scene. Is if you're not reinventing yourself all the time, um, people are going to get tired of, of what you're doing. And a lot of these guys are in their late 40s and 50 years old, and they're still, um, you know, playing the cover circuit. Um, and these are guys that, you know, had opportunities, um, and just things didn't pan out for one reason or another. Probably because they also had a cover band on the side, and people didn't take them seriously. Because that's kind of what happens. And I have friends that are in this position, and that's really where the song comes from. Um, just watching them burn out and just tear themselves down. And it's sad. I mean, it's, it is one of the more darker songs that I've ever written. Um, but it had to come out because it was bothering me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, but, you know, it is out there. And it, it is a big problem for a lot of musicians that otherwise are phenomenally talented. Right. And right. It, and, you know, not everybody can be successful. Right. Now, you know, I do know that now some people are, they make a living and uh, out of music. I mean, basically, so if I had a choice right now but, but between being a defense contractor and commuting every day and doing the same job, you know, doing uh, systems engineering and stuff like that, or singing, uh, in, say, in a tribute band, you know, that uh, let's say I, mm -hmm. I, I sound an awful lot like a particular artist and um, people hired me to sing that artist's songs for, for like, you know, special events and corporate events and uh, private parties and things like that. I mean, if I could make a living doing that, as opposed to something I wasn't enjoying, you know, make a living singing and, and performing, mm -hmm. it, then I would do it in a heartbeat. And, and, and I think what, well, I would, sure. what I would do, though, is, is <clears throat> as part of that, because I am... A songwriter and and uh, you know um, as you know uh, Big Dog's a songwriter and we we work on a lot of stuff together and in fact most of our stuff we've written together. Um, it, it one it makes me wonder if if it's easier to get your foot in the door initially as a really really kick butt artist who sounds great doing other people's music just to get your foot in the door. Um, and then once you're in the door, start introducing um, some of your own material. And if your fans, if you've got a big fan base and people are your fans simply because 
of of your voice and the the delivery, the way you deliver, or even the way you make somebody else's song uh, completely different and put it in your own style, um, which a lot of artists have done. You know, um, I don't know if you've ever heard our remake of uh, "Won't Be Fooled Again." It's a totally folk version of of the yeah. Who's song. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, yeah. and you, believe it or not, you know, you can build a pretty decent fan base, at least nowadays with the internet, because the internet has opened up such huge doors for everybody um, to be able to market your own stuff and, um, and build your fan base. And, and, and in fact, I read an article recently about, you know, how the music industry has changed so much in the last 10 years and that nowadays labels aren't looking to um, to take an artist from scratch and build them up. They're looking for the artists that already have a huge following. Artists that, that yeah. be, through social networking, through Twitter and Facebook, if they see you're an artist and you've got, you know, thousands of Twitter followers and thousands of Facebook fans and, and everything that you put out there, whether it's a karaoke cover or whether it's an original tune, people eat it up. That's, they, they say, okay, that's somebody that, that, already, that saves them money on marketing because they already have a huge following. Um, so anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. I just, what are your thoughts about that? No, about no that's okay. I, I totally understand what you're saying, but it's very rare to see that. Uh -huh. um, in my experience, being a cover band um, and trying to break into the original music thing, being a cover band is a handicap to an original artist um, trying to now, if they're marketing themselves on their own, that's a completely different story. Right. Um, but even but you know the people that are doing that and really succeeding is rare, and I, and I mean you know really succeeding, making a living. Um, that's really rare to find somebody that's doing that. Now, if you know if you're very savvy um, and, and you can market yourself online, I mean you know look at you, there's you know, there's Justin Bieber's out there. <laughs> um, but that's very, but it's rare. It's rare. Um, and if you can market yourself that way, then you can be in a cover band and you know promote your original music. But I still believe that you have to keep them separate because music industry people they will consider um, a cover band more of a handicap than, than anything because um, when you think of a cover band, you think of a bar band. Uh -huh. The music industry wants professional people who are going to perform on a big stage and be professional. When right. you think of a cover band, you think of a bar band. And right. That's been my experience, is that that's, that's what you know, the management um, and the record labels, that's what they see as sure. you mentioned cover band. Now, if you're doing it all on your own, then all bets are off. But even in that way, again, it's very rare for somebody to really excel like that. Now, you know, a perfect example of a band that was a tribute band uh -huh. that made a huge was Godsmack. Godsmack right. was an Alice in Chains tribute band. So, I mean, it does happen, but it's rare. And, and again, the song is not really to down anybody in a cover band. It's basically, you know, my experiences and, and the people that I've met that, that it has really um, destroyed them. Right. And, and I guess that, so I guess it, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to be uh, an artist that tours around the world and, and, and sells millions of records, absolutely. You're not going to do it singing cover songs. You're not. But if, right. if, if you want to make a career and you want to stay in your local area and just be big in your local area um, and, and in high demand to perform, because a lot, you know how a lot of people, they like to hear music, like at weddings at corporate parties, mm -hmm. they want to hear stuff they can sing. They want to hear stuff they know. Absolutely. Uh, they want to, you know, stuff that yep. they can dance to because they know it. Um, so, and and it is, you know, pe people do make a lot of money doing that. Um, and and you know, every now and then, some of them do uh, get to tour if they're if they're really good. Like you said, Godsmack. If they're really good, um, then the the demand for them expands beyond the uh, local area so you know um, yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely true um but being in a cover band is i mean you, you i have yet to see anybody not, not a tribute band right. but a cover band right. i have yet to see anybody that can 
really make a living. You can make some money, but if you think about somebody, you know, in their 30s that has a family, um, you think about, you know, how much money that you would have to make performing to be able to support, you know, your family, you know, pay a mortgage, pay for health care, um, all this stuff. I mean, playing, you know, even a $1,000 a night um, gig with four guys at the band, that's just, that's tough stuff right there. Right, absolutely. Um, well, listen, I'm, I'm looking at the time here, and uh, we haven't um, played a promo. We're going to just play a, a little promo, and um, I'm going to invite anybody that's listening in to uh, call in if you want to chit-chat with uh, Michael J. Marino, front man, uh, singer, songer, writer, producer, musician, extraordinaire, um, and fabulous friend. Uh, the number here is 347-838-8898. And actually, uh, I went ahead and uploaded another one of your songs that I want you to talk about when we come back. Truth is Stronger Than Lies. <laughs> that, that's, that's one that, that, that we all enjoy. All right, we'll be right back. Stand up. We're gonna tell you what lies to make up. You're gonna be the one to stop what's been going on or contribute to the fall of America. Mm -hmm. We don't stand a chance when you hide the truth behind the lies and draw the blinds and close. Someplace else to live The more you need The more they take The less we have The less we make And I can't take much more Cause I I'm gonna punch I'm gonna kick I'm gonna scream Till my voice is gone Push I'm gonna shove I'm gonna show you Where you're wrong And you don't stand a chance Cause the truth is Always stronger Standing on is high Cause I, I'm gonna punch I'm gonna kick I'm gonna scream till my voice is gone Push, I'm gonna shove I'm gonna show you when you were wrong And you don't stand a chance Cause the truth is always stronger Step to the right, you'll be surprised what you learn in a day. Don't let them tell you what life to live. Don't let them tell you how much to give. Stop the cycle of dependency, political ascendancy. Cause they can't lead the way. Cause I, I'm gonna punch, I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna scream till my voice is gone Push, I'm gonna shove I'm gonna show you where you were wrong And you don't stand a chance Cause the truth is always stronger than the lie Y'all gonna punch, kick, scream Y'all gonna push, shove Show them how they were wrong And they don't stand a chance Lie, 
looks like uh, our mini cam uh, died on us again. Sorry about that, Michael. It, and not only that, but I, uh, I uh, <laughs> hang on just a second. Um, I need to um, refresh our radio stream as well. Uh, yeah, I, um, I meant to hit the promo and I accidentally had the mouse slightly uh, off and it, I clicked on your song instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, why don't, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, what uh, the story behind that song? All right, well, that, that song's kind of a little bit all over the board, but it's basically saying, um, you know, are you going to be somebody that just uh, swallows the lies and moves on with your life? In other words, do you, you know, do you need to be told everything? Do you need to be told how to do everything in your life? Or, you know, are you going to speak out and, you know, even if you think it's futile, um, tell people the truth? And, um, you know, look, I don't know, especially in a couple months, um, I got to so health care, care, more, more times than I have in my whole life over the last two months. Um, you know, I, my days are just consumed with people who want to talk about health care and, you know, it's like, what do you say? I've been telling you people this for years now, it seems, that this thing was going to be a debacle. How could you even, you know, think? How could you, you know, since when does, is the government going to run anything? And it, if it was only that simple, then fine, it would be great. But you know that there's all sorts of other, you know, devious things behind the health care plan, you know, whether it be information or whether it be, um, you know, wealth redistribution or whatever. It's it's a societal thing. It's not just a political thing. It's a societal thing. And um, this song just kind of um, goes along that avenue. You know, we've been lied to so much, especially with this administration. Um, just such blatant lies right out in front of our face. Um, how can anybody you know, still put up with this stuff. And that's what the song says. Are you going to you know, deal with it or are you going to speak out and tell people the truth? Um, at some point, people have to understand the truth. Absolutely. They may not care, but they have to understand it at some point. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, article about, um, and, and they've been talking about it on uh, Fox News, PolitiFact um, uh, said uh, they, they took a poll and the number one big lie of the year was if you like your health care plan you can keep it period i saw that <laughs> i saw that it's just amazing you amazing know, and and that and so you know getting back to tony and the younger generation this is uh, something that will hopefully make them wake up and make them start looking at things and saying whoa time out wait a minute you know this is not he lied to us you know, and and yeah. once you break that trust with somebody, it's it's pretty darn hard to get it back. And especially if you you you're a chronic liar and you're constantly telling uh, untruths. And then you know, uh, I would not want uh, what's his name, Carney, the um, uh, press yeah. secretary. I would not want his job. You know, those re reporters no they're hammering at him, and he's just like, uh. uh. <laughs> Yeah, he, especially this past week. I mean, this past week, he was ragged, man. I mean, they were <laughs> really taking him to task. And, you know, what do you say? I mean, how can he, he can't, there is no defense for, for what the president is doing. So, if, you know, if you're the press secretary, I mean, you're between a rock and a hard place. What is there to say that you haven't said already? Exactly. Exactly. And, it, it, you know, at what point, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I went through, um, uh, POW training and, and the whole idea if you're ever you know uh, held hostage by the enemy uh, the, when, when you're being interrogated the idea is not to convince them you're telling the truth but to convince them you're not going to change your story and that's pretty much what they do they just you know just keep repeating it uh, I forget who said it whether it was Lenin or Stalin or one of those uh, you know Marxist communists that basically said or maybe it was Hitler you know, tell a lie, make it big, and and, and yeah. uh, repeat it enough, and the people will believe it. Well, you know, that's funny you mentioned that, because I was thinking about this the other day, where this administration, they just, 
they'll just say things. They'll just put things out there, mm -hmm. and they'll leave it out there. And, I, I, you know, and when you first hear it, you say to yourself, oh, my God, that is ridiculous. You know, you you, you got to be kidding me. Nobody's going to believe that. And then here you go a month later, it's common law or it's common knowledge or whatever. And I was thinking on, on, along the lines of that, um, you know, what if, let's say, after the 2014 elections, um, you know, they just decide, and obviously this is, this is fallacy, but what if they just decided to start working on, you know, Barack Obama's uh, third term and, you know, his re-election campaign for a third term. Well, at first, and, and especially in the climate that this country is in today, um, half the people in the country at first would be like, well, that's not right. He can't run for a third term. But if they just went along, like it, if the administration just went along with it like it was normal business, I guarantee you by the time election day came around, nobody would care. Isn't that a sad statement, it's a sad scary. testimony? Yeah. To how far downhill we have come yeah. as a, so a society, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, that's, uh, it's been talked about. It's, uh, they've thrown that oh, out yeah. there. Uh, there. I know that there's, um, I think there's an uh, HR, a bill that uh, some Democrat has introduced repeatedly uh, in over the past several years uh, to remove term limits for uh, the president uh, of the United States. And yeah, we want to go in the opposite direction. That's not the direction we want to go in. No. That's just unreal. Uh, you know, and everybody's talking yeah, about okay. Hillary Clinton, you know, uh, running in 2016. But, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't think, even though she may want to, I don't think um, yeah. the Democrat Party wants uh, her being there. I really think you're right. I think that they're going to do what they can to try to, uh, I mean, they've, they've done so many other uh, things that we never thought we'd see in our lifetime. Um, yeah. And, and if that were to happen, God forbid, uh, things will uh, get pretty ugly pretty quick. So. Things would definitely, yeah, things would definitely degrade in the country. And, and you know, at some point, and, and I don't know if it's in, in our lifetime or whatever, but if, if, if it keeps going this way, at some point there is going to be a major revolt in this country, and you know what it's going to lead to. I, I can only imagine, but um, you know the the only way that that doesn't happen is um, you know they keep they keep um, indoctrinating these kids in school to come out of school thinking that you know again everything is normal, everything is okay, this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of kids that aren't tying it right and you know even even my daughter my my daughter is 14 years old um you know and she came home one day and she and she told me that her history teacher told her that um that benjamin franklin was a hypocrite okay wow and i said well why why would he say that and you know she said something about ownership and this and the other thing and i said okay wait a minute so um so let me get this straight. He's basically saying that because Benjamin Franklin, um, you know, helped to write the Constitution, um, which essentially gave freedom to people, he's a hypocrite because he had slaves or um, he didn't uh, go against slavery or whatever. And she said, yeah, well, that's basically what, what he was getting at. And, you know, I was like, where do I even start with this? Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, that is so unbelievable that this is what a history teacher would out of all the things that Benjamin Franklin had done in his life, you call him a hypocrite because of because of that, right? Um, and but that's it, it's unbelievable to me, right? Well, that's uh, what the uh, the left wants, though. They that's why you know they they uh, are they took over the Department of Education and uh, this whole thing with Common Core um, to try to really? change history and and to make things like uh, capitalism evil and. And to uh, to put down create uh, 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 Christianity and uh, to to destroy any any good uh, that our founding fathers did and and make them out to be evil and and to try to p prop up those uh, that are now uh, the purveyors of hope and change um, as as yeah. the as the true saviors uh, of the people of the United States and it's 
it is it really is a frightening thing so um anyways you know what um since i did screw that last uh <laughs> that last one up um i went ahead and, and uploaded another one of your songs fools down and you know since right. we are talking about a bunch of fools um that are are teaching our children um to um uh, think like they do and and that which is why I'll, actually uh, and Ms. Day, our producer, Ms. Lisa Day, um, and can can attest to this, but uh, homeschooling is getting bigger and bigger um, because people, oh, yeah. you know, conservative uh, parents are seeing what what's being taught in our schools, and it's it's bad. Um, not only are they dumbing down our children um, uh, with uh, revisionist history. But I mean, gosh, I don't know. Our, our standing in in uh, school um, uh, SATs or, or our testing scores, we have dropped so far down in in the rankings um, uh, compared to other countries, and and it's pretty frightening. You know, I guess they figure, you know, let's make them, let's uh, let's make them as as um, pliable as possible, so that we can pretty much tell them anything, and they will believe it. Um, and that's what they're doing. That's, exa that's exactly right. That, that is so right on. I mean, um, and, and the only thing that, you know, the only thing that you can do to combat that is either homeschool or, you know, like, like I try to have conversations with my daughter every chance that I can about history um, and about the future and, you know, what the future for her is going to be like. Um, you know, I'm, I've been trying to encourage my daughter at 14 to, um, think about um, a career in government to try to to try to get in there and, and change things. And you know, I know there's not a lot of parents that that do that kind of thing, but that's what parents need to start doing because the children are not getting the education in school. They're getting indoctrination, and like you said, that is so right on. They don't give a crap about the education of these kids. They want to make sure that when these kids enter the workforce they are zombies and they will do whatever is needed of them yeah that's scary oh that, yeah i tell you what if they're anyways i'm not going to talk about my personal situation but um tell us about fools down okay fools down is just really a rallying cry um it's a it's 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 a really fun song it's one of my favorites um and it's just basically saying you know down with um, all the idiots in the government, um, you know, stand up against this stuff, um, and and you know, do you know, do what you think is right. Don't listen to this crap that's going on in the government. Live your life the way that you feel your life should be lived, and don't listen to the, to the crap that people are telling you. If, 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 um, you know, especially when it comes to um, when it comes to religion um, and cultural issues, do what you think is right, and and don't listen to the idiots. <laughs> awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and play Fools Down by Chloe's Open Socket. Constitution 
again you guys kick so much butt i love 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 your music and uh, i think i told oh, you long you. long time ago my favorite um uh heavy metal heavy hard rock band used to be metallica until i heard you guys <laughs> oh, thank you that's uh, that's a huge compliment right there oh yeah you know <laughs> when i'm in the mood for some head banging and uh some uh you know motivation to to get off my butt and, and work out or do something. It's like, let's, let's listen to some, some COS. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to tell you, it's been a real pleasure. I cannot believe we almost went through two full hours with you. I do apologize for a, a couple of hiccups that we had um, uh, with the, uh, the software. And, uh, you know, it's, I think, I think uh, Santa needs to bring uh, me a new laptop with a he much heavier, <laughs> <laughs> heavier duty processor and i was doing some research something i think they, they call um what is it intel i7 or something like that is is like the 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 newest or best processor you can get in a laptop and and i don't have anywhere near that so uh that will be on my wish list for sure <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, so now, just so everybody knows, uh, uh, again, they can find your music at chloesopensocket.com. When will they be able to purchase your new songs, I'm Not and Eulogy? Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, I'm, we're actually contemplating um, recording um, everything acoustically like um like we're gonna perform like we're gonna perform them in april mm -hmm. we're actually kicking around the idea right now of doing um a whole album of all of the material acoustically and putting it out um uh putting it out as a full release um and if we do that it's gonna happen quickly we're probably gonna take probably no more than two two and a half months to do it um 
I'm not sure if I'm even going to release these for for sale at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm gonna I'll have them on the website uh, probably by midweek. So anybody can go there and listen to them. I might even just have free downloads if they want to download them. In fact, I probably will just have a free download on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if they go to the website, they can download it for free. Um, and you know, don't forget if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm I'm all over Facebook. Um, you can get me on Facebook at, at Michael Michael J Marino or Chloe's Open Socket, either one. Um, and that's you know I'm on Twitter too, but I, I don't spend a whole lot of time on Twitter. Um, and of course, you can always you can always find me at the Big Dog Music Mafia. Absolutely, and and we are thrilled to have you as part of the Big Dog family. You guys have been with us for for quite a while now, and and I I have to smile when I think back to. Um, all the different events that you guys were at. You know, I, I look through some of my old pictures of us performing at the 4th of, Ju- the 4th of July All-American event. Yeah. Um, that was a lot yeah. of fun. And we got some pretty cool pictures next to those old cannons. Um, uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the, the picture of you guys standing there uh, with that big flag behind you at DAR Constitution Hall when you performed for the uh, um, that, that uh, huge convention uh the night before the glenn beck rally and um yeah that was cool yep and then the very next day michelle bachman had you uh recruited mm-hmm. you guys to perform at an impromptu tea party right after the beck rally yeah. and um uh, yeah. and then gosh and i i tell people all the time how uh it was such a pleasure to have such talented musicians who were able to take not just my songs but um like folks like Anne marie harpin and sherry markell and I think uh, Ava Aston and a few other people who all performed the night before at that um, mm-hmm. uh, that event up in um, oh gosh I can't think of the name it was at the Best Western Hotel. Um, it yeah. was yeah, and and you guys basically learned those songs while you were driving, taking turns driving up from Florida. <laughs> that's just that's that's yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I remember uh, I remember Robin giving us um, I, I I think it was. Nah, maybe 10 or 11 songs and uh, we were like okay you know this is this is cool no problem no problem and then the night before we leave he like throws two more songs at us and he's like hey I told this guy that we'd um, that we you know play these songs with him and he told me they're like you did you did what and he's like yeah you know I didn't really think it'd be that big of a deal or whatever and I'm like Robin we don't when are we going to rehearse these songs oh they're not really that hard we'll, we'll be able to do it we'll just uh <laughs> You know, we'll sit in the hotel room and with the acoustic guitars and, and figure this stuff out. And we did, and that's the way it went. So, it, you know, good times. It was a lot of fun. It's it's a remarkable story, honestly. I mean, I've I, I can't imagine any other band doing something like that. Just literally learning five different artists' songs that y'all never played before, and never having rehearsed uh, with these artists, and just basically getting up on stage. I mean, I think we all ran through. Uh, each song maybe once the night before when we were setting up and um I remember I remember running through stuff in your kitchen <laughs> that's right well yeah that was that was for the uh when you guys came to DC um uh was it for the Richmond convention or maybe it was no yeah, actually yeah I think I think that's what it was I think it was I think it was for Richmond yeah yeah, yeah. So lots of great memories, and we're looking forward to making some some new memories at the rally, oh, uh, yeah. defend the Constitution rally, um, where we also will ha- uh, be getting to uh, jam with uh, Brian Futch and the Red Velvet Mojo, Nathan Picard and the Vacancy, Ms. Cat Beach, Chip Murray, awesome. and, yeah, and Bobby Powers and Party Time, uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a party. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait. I'm so. I'm so excited to do this thing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking not just one hour of your time, but two hours of your time to hang out with us and and share your awesome new tunes. And uh, are you gonna? Do you think you'll be doing any uh, video, even if just a lyric video for the the new songs? Yeah, we're actually thinking if we do this, if we do this acoustic thing, I think we're gonna run some video. Um, along with it while we do it, because we're probably going to do a lot of it live. Um, so we are thinking about uh, running some video along with, with some, maybe probably not all the songs, but maybe five or six of them anyway. So, yeah, we're, we're looking to do that too. Okay, because, uh, you know, for those who don't know, Big Dog TV is where you can check out the music videos of 
uh, some of the songs that you did here tonight. Uh, Truth is Stronger Than Lies, Show Me the Way Home, I think, While You Were Looking, um, and uh, a few others um, over at BigDogTV.com, uh, which is where... Uh, actually, it's not BigDogTV.com. It's BigDogMusicRadio.com. Uh, Gosh, I'm getting myself all confused here. <laughs> we are all over the map. We have... Uh... Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> but, you know, that's the, that's the idea. Market the, uh, the, the heck out of all of this fantastic talent using the new school way of doing business. And uh, more and more people are going to get to enjoy your music and, and more importantly, uh, your planting seeds. Um, with uh, with a, yes. a big important dose of of the truth. So God bless you. Mm-hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll be in touch between now and and April, I'm sure. And if I don't hear from you before Christmas, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to be pretty busy the next few weeks. I know I will be. So Merry Christmas to you and your family, and uh, give our best to Tony. Well, thank you, Lisa, and Merry Christmas to you and your family. And um, uh, we'll probably chat. Uh, the beginning of the year, um, uh, hand around a lot of these things. But listen, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I, I appreciate the opportunity very, very much. Fantastic. God bless. Take care, Mike. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, so um, that was Michael J. Marino from Chloe's Open Socket. Uh, we had the uh, rare privilege of having him uh, for two whole hours tonight. Uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of song requests. Actually, we didn't, I think we had one, um, for a song that we played last week. Um, but, uh, we unfortunately are out of time. Um, I think I might be able to squeeze in that one song, um, by Mr. Joe Merrick. Um, I'm, you know, I had it loaded, and then my uh, system crashed, and of course I did lose that particular song because I, I looked through, um, hang on just a second. Um, anyways, uh, so for those of you who did stay with us the full two hours, thank you, and um, we will see you next Saturday, 10 p.m. Eastern here for Off the Hook and Afterburner, and our uh, spotlight artist will be uh, Michael Antonio, all one word, Michael Antonio from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's got a song, uh, a really uh, great protest song, and hopefully he'll have some new songs to share with us. And um, so we're going to go ahead and, and close out tonight's show with a song by Mr. Joe Merrick, which I am still looking for. <laughs> I thought I'd keep talking and I'd be able to find it uh, while I was talking. But, you know, it's one of those, I can't talk and chew gum at the same time for whatever reason. And you know what? I am, for whatever reason, unable to find that particular song. So, oh, okay, I found it. It is Santa is Alive and Well by Mr. Joe Merrick. And that will be our final song for the evening. Thank you to everybody uh, for for uh, watching the show and... Um, <laughs> I'm reading the chat room and uh yes, it got loaded and I lost it all. <laughs> all right, this is Joe Merrick Santa is alive and My kids are just old enough to understand about the North Pole in the white bearded man and the miracle that plays out on Christmas Eve they know about reindeer that fly around the whole world in just one night and the presents that get left under the tree As I recite the night before Christmas While I'm tucking them in I start to reminisce and feel the magic once again I saw him through my children's eyes Santa is alive and well While they spy Sky, and they listen for
for the sleigh bells. He'll be here tonight to stoke the stockings tight. I'm sure as I can breathe. Santa is alive and well, cause my children believe. The morning is coming around real soon. The child of feet will race into the living room. And I get to relive a long lost memory. As all of the presents unwrap, I believe old St. Nicholas is finally back. And that's the greatest gift those kids can give. And that's going to conclude our live listener request show, Afterburner. We want to thank you for tuning in every Saturday night. And we hope to see you again here next week at 10 p.m. Eastern for Off the Hook, where you'll get to hear some more fantastic tunes and get to know one of our fabulous culture warriors, followed by our show Afterburner, where you get to pick the songs that we play. So until we meet again, we want to wish you a blessed week ahead and encourage you to tell all your friends and family members about the fabulous culture warriors at BigDogMusicMafia.com and Big Dog Music Radio, where conservative is always cool. On behalf of all the culture warriors at BigDogMusicMafia.com, Godspeed to you and yours. This is Lisa May and Lisa Day signing out. Until next week.